Hello, everyone. Can I have everyone to stand up and say, oop? Whoa! Thank you. I wanted some energy. Uh, my name is Martin. I have been a LARPer since 1994, on and off. Uh, the last few years, I have started to be typecast as a, often as an oppressor or similar thing, and that has made me explore different uh, themes uh, and given me some awareness that not everyone uses. Today I'm going to talk about the concept of how you can use, because what's more prevalent in, or relevant in some LARPs these days is uh, character transparency. So you, all people can read all characters so you are set up that you can give away agency to co-players. I'm gonna go a little into it, what I mean. Take for example a story. I have uh, attended Conscience, the Westworld LARP in Spain. A very good LARP, has a lot of uh, different things going for it. Intricate system of characters, and I may have hacked the LARP in this case, but the so-called black cats, the one running around this western town, shooting down dro androids and raping them and doing bad things, most of them end up just doing things at players, co-players. On the other side, if you knew the background of the androids you have and their story, their narrative and their arc, you could have scenes more set up in a case where oh, uh, where you have you're doing things to them that is relevant to their story for their narrative instead of just doing blank neutral things to them I have a example for example uh, I had a rancher big rancher with a daughter that was pregnant with his worst enemy's uh, son and this rancher also was uh, a secret lover with a sheriff in town what do i do as uh, the big black cat in town of course the only thing that is good i know at least one person in here that was in that scene so you put first the daughter in the chair bind her in this little shack you take uh, the lover of, uh, or the father of the baby and put him on a couch. You take the lover, the sheriff, in another chair and then you take the rancher in at the end and you give him a gun. You say, you have one bullet, the choice is yours. You tell them about the baby, you share the that the sheriff actually has a secret lover. You give the information out you give him the agency to choose and you do things to him that is relevant to his story. And this you can do through agency. That it's just one of many examples. Before I go on, I'm gonna just quickly go into... Whoop. Definitions. When I talk about agency, I am talking about the player having the opportunity and possibilities to form their own story, to have agency to navigate through it so that their own narrative is moved and not blocked or in a way steered away from what the experience they want to have. The other Transparency, as I said, is more where, in, the, in this case, transparency of character, so you can actually read other characters, get their arc, and make it relevant. It's a very simple way, and it's not new. I haven't invented it. It's just more a thing that people should be conscious about, and it can be used as an oppressor, but also as a co-player. It take, can take a lot of work because you have to go through at least the characters that are um, in your sphere 
and the more characters you know, the better it is. In my case, I usually go through as many characters as I can. I find the information I find relevant, th try to get IDs, note them down. So I have like a big surface of things I can do. <coughs> you find what's relevant to that character story. You add that to the board. You <coughs> think about what kind of actions you can do to move, give them agency to move that narrative on. And then you try to find things where that narrative is coherent with your narrative and how you can make those two things go together and be an interesting story that moves everything on. It's quite simple as that, it's just to be conscious about it because a lot of players don't use this, they are afraid, they want secrets, they want anything. In my experience, almost always you end up with having a better experience and a more integral, the giving you get from another player after a LARP saying, oh, you really moved my story along, you really made something that was good for me. Some pitfalls you need to think about in this is to not make it too forced. A lot of times you can end up overreaching, and this is, takes training a little, but don't like, oh, he has the secret already, bam! You have to put it in so they can have that agency to expand it. You can open it a little, but try to make it so it's coherent with the story and narrative. Be conscious about pacing throughout the LARP. Don't blow out the big things at the start of the LARP. Try to see how it goes on and on. And if you're unsure, calibrate with that player. Talk to them. Take them out of play. Do a timeout. See what you can do, especially if you see players that you obviously don't have play. How can you go in and work with them? and make their story better. I'm gonna have some examples of what I have done before, or other people have done. At a slave plantation LARP, I played the overseer with 20 players uh, as slaves for a week. That was harsh. But also you had the nobility in the big manor, you had all the slaves outside, and then you had the rebellious slave. In this case, played by Kjell Hugos. I asked him for permission. Uh, he played the rebellious slave. No one wanted him in this house. He didn't have agency to do the things he needed to interact with the people. You have to find, instead of blocking, blocking, because that's rational, you find us, me in the act I was. I say, okay, all the doors and hinges and shit in the house needs to be fixed. Go and do it. And when it's like, oh, we should take it. No, no, I don't have time for that shit. Just do it now. Okay, he has total availability of the house. He gets play. He gets all these things. That's one way to do it. That's a very oppressor way. But you can also ask the other way. If you have like an oppressor or someone in authority and control. Another example is at the Linning International Boarding School many years ago, the brilliant... Uh, Gustav Tegelby played the drama teacher and read all the characters. Someone was there, they know, laughing. <laughs> Where he read all the student characters and he matched, he put them in pairs to play parts of plays. And he had like, oh, the suicidal girl should play the suicidal character. And when she was crying and running out of the room, he was sitting the morning after at breakfast and saying, she should be an actor, it, this is fabulous. And you just go into what's bad with the characters. You move their narrative, you put them in focus instead of just, oh, this is horrible. Uh. You ha also have LARPs that integrally go into this and make it Excellent, like Baphomet. Baphomet has a setup where reinforcing, making that LARP better for you is to know the more you know the characters, all of them, because everyone can get an amulet, turn into a god, and tell everyone what shit they're about to do. Deviant shit. But if you make that shit relevant stories instead of just debauchery, okay, you, this is 
a bad, shitty thing to do to your character, your special character, not just in general. It becomes so much stronger and so much a powerful thing. It's also, in my opinion, this is mostly meant for players, the talk I did now, but I find the value of it should be thought about about more and more game designers. And to put it in your workshops, how you think, how you disagree things before a LARP. I'm not saying it's for every LARP, but it's a good and strong point that can make a lot of LARPs better. Any questions? To make a cheat, she asked to make a cheat sheet so and give it to the players is a cool way. It's a helpful crutch for people that aren't used to it. But I think the ownership of the ideas and how you can make will make that more your own because owning, having ownership of your experience and the ownership of the creativity makes it so you as player get the thankfulness you get is better. But absolutely, if you. Yeah, it's better with you on explaining the system rather than doing it for them. Any other questions? I have. Yeah. My question was very similar to uh, hers. Uh, what is your um, like favorite way? Uh, what does your favorite transparency look like? Like, what's, uh, do you have any advice of how to uh, make transparency? Like, um, sort of like the cheat uh, sheet or? Uh, uh, you mean the technical thing behind it? is to think about the small things. Yeah. It's when you s know that the son in the house on the slave LARP has a sexual relation to one of the slaves and you're standing behind, uh, beside him talking about this slave without knowing, but you're like, yeah, yeah, that's a bad slave. He, he needs to be beaten because he's a very broken little boy. And you turn on, don't you agree? Small things like that doesn't need to be big, but it's a real big relevance to their story and the focus on them. Now I'm, my time is up, and it's over to the brilliant Catherine Wendt.